Praise the Lord. I want to speak this morning on the desire to praise God. The desire to praise God. Turn with me please to Psalms chapter 27, verses 5 and 6. This is the third of a series that's coming from Psalms chapter 27. God's word reads accordingly. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, and the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, and now shall mine head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing ye, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Many times we might think of enemies as a foreign force, a foreign army. And that could be possibly so as well. But we also know that they're spiritual enemies. They're enemies that might be your neighbor. And we need to turn our lives over to Jesus. Because your enemy is trying to get you down. Trying to knock you down. Trying to keep you down. That's why we need God's Word. That's why we need to be in God's Word. Because behind every corner, there is someone, spiritual or physical, that's going to try to get you down. And I want to share this with you too. It's very important. Now this is very important. For the Word of God says many are called, but few are chosen. We take that as workers, and rightfully so. But I want to go even further. I want to take it to its deepest meaning. There are many who think they are saved, and they're not saved. And one of the easiest ways to find out is simply how much love does a brother or sister have for her brother or sister. And I'm not talking about physical blood. It is, that's the case, amen. But I'm talking about the spiritual blood, amen. When we're saved, the blood of Jesus Christ fills us. We're saved through His blood. And if I'm saved and you're saved, if I'm, I'm a brother, you're a sister, then we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And the Bible says, others will know, others will know that you are my disciples by your love one for another. Now this is very important. How many here wants victory? Amen. Amen. You said you wanted a miracle. We want victory. We want the peace that surpasses all understanding. Well, there's one thing we need to understand too. Before you can claim the Word of God, you've got to believe in the Word of God, you've got to live the Word of God, and you've got to let the Word of God take control over your life. If you harbor resentment, if you harbor whatever, I'm saying now, get it straight, get on your face, confess it, repent it, get it out of you in order for you to be able to receive what God has for you to receive. You're not going to get blessed. You're not going to get healing. You're not going to get peace if you harbor resentment. You want to, you've got to get even attitude. Amen. I'm here to tell you the truth. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. If you don't like somebody because of their color, get on your face and ask God to forgive you. If you don't like somebody because of whatever, get on your face and ask God to forgive you. Then you can get in line to the blessings that God has for you. And I'm talking the truth because I see things happening here at the Father's house. Jesus Christ is sinner. But when Jesus Christ is sinner, I'm not talking about whether you make mistakes or not. I'm talking about whether you forgive. And that's very important. Forgiveness, repentance. And that's the way it is. Amen? Praise God. But I want to talk about a desire to praise God. A desire to praise God. How many here this morning has a desire to praise and worship God? Amen. And you know, to believe, to believe the Word of God, but to believe the Word of God in a positive way, because I don't want to harbor resentment. I don't want to have a get even attitude. I want to have an attitude of forgiveness. Because when I bow and we pray for people, I want the Spirit of God to flow through me. Amen? Amen. And I want it to flow through me to you and from you to me. Amen. And that's very important. The Bible says that my head, verse 6, the Bible says my head. Well, let's read it. Verse 6 says, And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies. Now, whoever your enemy is, 
When you come to Jesus Christ, the Word of God says, if you follow my example, if you follow my teachings, you are my disciples. And if you don't, I believe it's simple. If you don't, you're not a disciple of Jesus. If you're not a disciple of Jesus, you're not following Jesus and you're not a learner of Jesus' Word. Amen? That's when the enemy comes in and has a field day with you. But the Bible says, if I follow the Word of God, it doesn't mean that I'm perfect. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about obedience. Because God is going to work this perfection out in you. Amen? Amen. But I'm talking about repentance, forgiveness. And when that takes place, your head will be lifted high. But first, it begins with trust. Now let's talk about trust. Y'all understand what I'm saying? What does the word trust mean? You know what the word trust means. Trust is reliance on another. I trust when somebody says something, I trust them whether they're going to do it or not. After three times they say something, they don't do it, what happens? The trust is no longer there. I think our families need to start trusting each other, but they need to start doing what they say they're doing. We need trust. We need trust in the church. We need trust in the body of believers. If you don't trust me, then what, what, if, you don't have, if you don't have, I didn't say faith, I don't have faith in me. You have faith in Jesus Christ. But you have trust that I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Does that mean I'm perfect? No. Does that mean I'm going to make mistakes? Yes. But the trust is that I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. And that's very important to have trust. We need trust in our families. We need trust on the job. We need trust in our church. Amen. And that's very important is trust. There is trust and there is trust. Now I'm not playing words, but what I'm saying is, how about complete trust? Now we trust Jesus for our salvation, don't we? Yes. But now do we trust Jesus for every aspect of our life? Like I just said, we've been praying, we've been praying for it's been a long time. And my heart was aching. And we cried out. And God answered in the proper time. Amen. In the proper time. Hang on. Don't give up. But complete trust. I have complete assurance on God and what His Word says. If His Word says it, and if I'm obedient and I'm following Christ, then I claim it. If I'm not obedient and I'm not following Christ, what gives me the right to claim it? Come on now. We got too many Christians living the way they want to live and they want to claim something. When, come on, I don't want to get into that. But what I'm trying to do is share with you. Trust completely in Christ Jesus. Pray and trust and get out the way. That's the best thing. I like this. Let's pray and trust and get out the way and trust God to do what He says He's going to do. Amen. 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 You might, you might be, let me just use a tooth, for example. My brother came up with a tooth. You might have a whatever it is, and you might want to save that tooth. But that tooth might be gone, but you have to pull it out. Do you trust God to take care of the situation? Well, I believe God wants to take care of that situation too. I believe God is a God of all. And He loves us, and He created us, and He cares for us. But the trust that I'm talking about is complete assurance on God. That is, just don't say it, but live it. Believe it and live it. If you made a mistake, say, Lord, I made a mistake. I want to repent. I want to repent. Now, what do I have to do to get through this? God says, you follow me, son, I'm going to bring you through it. He didn't say he's going to take it away from me. He might, but he, a lot of times he didn't, but he says, I will bring you through it. I will bring you to the other end. I will, I will bring you to where you need to be. Amen? Amen? How many of you have ever said something and they really mean it but they forget it? Do y'all ever did that? Yeah. I know my mind, a lot of times I got three or four things I'm trying to think and, and, I, and, and, and just so much, if I say something then, then I think about it a day later. Well, I got a sister, I've been promising her something for the past year. And please, don't let me, don't let her get out of this church without me doing it and have to put a, 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 the Father's house in them on the back of her car. I've been promising her for a year. I haven't forgot you. We're gonna get it done. Amen. We're gonna get it done. And you see, I got I gotta do it because I told her I would. Now she trusted me, but the problem comes in, I forget. But now I gotta get this off my mind. Amen. 
and move on and move on to something different. Hallelujah. But anyway, praise God. But just don't say you trust God, but live it. Live it. Because God is going to be with you. God didn't create you just. How many here, uh, how many here likes to fish? How many here likes to eat fish? See, we, we got some good things going on here. But you ever catch a fish, if you caught a fish, back back home when I was we kidding, we just stopped off and but things have been things are different now. And and we we daddy put a little fishing thing in there and got man, we catching fish and we catch that booger. Well sometimes they'd have a log that was hollowed out, you know, with a tree tree stump, and it was full of water, you put the fish in there and get ready. But anyway, what I got a kick out of, and this is a good illustration for, for a lot of us. When you catch a fish, when a fish is in the water, it is just glide through that water. Beautiful, isn't it? When you take that fish out of the water, what does it do? Flaps up and down, it's ugly, it's making a mess, it's getting tired, it's getting dirty, dusty, and everything else. Ain't accomplishing what God created that fish to accomplish. Amen? But you put it back in the water, it is beautiful as it glides through the water. I'm here to share this with you. God created us a certain way. And He's not pulling us out of what He created us to be and do. And He's not going to put us aside somewhere so we can just flop around. Can I have a name on that? God is working things out right now in our lives. Right now. Right now He's working it out. Right now. Right now. This moment. Hallelujah. We need to hear an amen on that. God is working it out in my life right now. Praise God. Then verse 6. Let's get back to 6 again. It says... And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round right about me. Therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices. What are we doing this morning? We're offering sacrifices to Jesus. We're offering sacrifice. I will present my sacrifice in the presence of the Lord for acceptance. I will come in the presence of the Lord with my offering. Now let me share this with you. I'm not talking about money now. Money is part of worship. That's just the way it is. God wants us to give 10%. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with more than that. I don't have a problem because God has met every need that I have. Amen. I don't have a problem with that. But we're not just talking about finances. When we say offer a sacrifice, it means our total self will be coming to God's house to worship and to praise Him and to offer our living sacrifice to Jesus. Amen. Our total self. Offer everything that we have to Him. You know, He's given us everything. He don't want nor does He need what He's already given us. If He needed it, He never would have gave it. The point comes in that we're afraid to give back because we're afraid we're going to lose something and God is the one that gives it. Amen? Amen. Amen. If He gives it, if he wants to give me 20 cows and I want to give a, a, a cow back to him, don't you think I need to give him a cow? Does he need the cow? No, he don't need the cow. But we need to be that in the presence of God offering our sacrifices to him. But it's not just money now. I want you to understand that. We're not talking about put everything on money. That's where we get into trouble. When we put everything on money, everything is on money. How about bowing down? How about coming and offering a sacrifice of praise? How about offering what's deep inside? The fruits of our lips. And that's what we're doing right now. We're doing it right now. We're doing it right now. Amen? We're doing it right now. Do I believe God is well pleased? I sure do. How many here is blessed? Amen. And if you're not sure, Stop breathing for 15 minutes and then I'll talk to you. Well, let's, let's say just stop breathing for six minutes. And if you're like me, if you stop for three, I got a problem. <laughs> but you see, God has blessed me with breath. And, you know, I'm ready to go. It'd be far greater and better for me, to be honest with you guys, it'd be better for me to just get up and go. I'm talking about going to heaven. I don't know how many ideas are going to work this out, but this is my mansion in heaven. They got a picture of it on the wall in my office. I'm up in the mountain somewhere and they got a little stream coming by. I got me a long cabin and smoke coming out the chimney. 
Amen. And there's a boat there that Mike can use when he comes visit me. Him and Bill will be going fishing in that beautiful stream. I guess, I don't know how you would do it, baby, but I guess I'll spend a week with you and you spend a week with me. I just don't know how to work it out. But amen. It's going to be good, though, isn't it? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Praise God. But when me and I did first got married, every Saturday morning, that's before our business grew, until I quit. I was working seven days a week and seven evenings a week. We used to go fishing on Saturday mornings. We'd go rent us a boat, a paddle boat, you know? And we'd go, man, we're catching streams about like that. And I didn't mind cleaning it, she didn't mind cooking it, we enjoyed eating it. Amen? But the old we got with a bunch of kids, things sort of changed. But hallelujah. Amen. But I will offer my sacrifice to Jesus in worship, in true, pure worship. And through this, now this is what we're saying. We're bringing in some stuff here this morning. Let's go to Psalm 360. Because this, this is the promise. We've got some promises from God. Worship the Lord the way the Lord has laid on your heart. If the Lord says, sit down and worship Him, sit down. The Lord says, get up, dance. Get up and dance. Amen. Amen. Do what God tells you. Don't we want to be blessed by God? Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 3, what did I say? Psalm 3, 6 says, I will lie. Let me go to, let me go to, let me see. Verse 6 says, I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. But I want to key in on six. Be not afraid of ten thousands. Ten thousand. That's a lot, isn't it? We got, we got some battles out here, brothers and sisters. There is battles out here. That's why we come to church. We come to church to get charged back up to worship God. But through this, who will I be afraid of? Now think about it. Come on, let's get into the spiritual realm now. We've got 10,000 enemies. And there's a lot of enemies that's lurking out there. Physical too, not just spiritual. But if there's 10,000 and the Bible says, who am I going to be afraid of? Isn't that great? Who am I going to be afraid of? I will lay down and sleep. Why? Because if 10,000 people come against me, my God is stronger than all of them. Amen. Now you see what I'm saying? What I'm saying? The enemy's coming against you. The, the enemy's coming against you. So if I know the enemy's coming against don't you think I ought to have a little sense to say, okay, God, I'm going to give my all to you because you're going to take care of me? Oh, come on now. Come on. Come on. I can't say this. God, take care of them, knock them down, cut their feet off or whatever, because I want to be, uh, 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 pray for them. Pray for their salvation. Pray that they'll be Jesus. Because eternity in hell is an eternity that never ceases. And I don't want nobody to go to hell. And God, if somebody was able, if that's the case, I want God to save everybody. He saved all who will allow Him to save them. It's the blood of Jesus. He went to the cross. He paid the price. Through His blood, I'm saved. Through His blood. My God, let's get back to the 10,000 that comes against me. My God is stronger than all of them. Who's coming against you? Right now, who's coming against you? Your God is stronger than Satan. Your God is stronger than your adversity, adversary. Your God is stronger than your God is stronger for those who believe and follow God. And it says, and, and we finish up with, with uh, let me go to, let's go back to Psalms uh, 27, 6, and let's get to the latter part. I will, I will offer in His tabernacle sacrifices of joy. What did we do this morning? I will sing ye, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Let's go back to verse 5. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, and in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Now I will sing praises unto the Lord. I will sing praises unto the Lord. I will offer my sacrifice of joy. 
come to church, and I want to share this, and to me this is very important, people. Come. Why do we come to church? Have you ever asked yourself that reason? That's a good question, isn't it? It's a very good question. Come to church to sing praises to God. Me and I did, we started something on Saturday Tuesday. <coughs> we turned the TV off, we turned everything off with praise and worship music. We did it for a little over an hour last night. To enter into the presence of God. In order for us to be ready for this morning. I'm not saying for everybody to do that. I'm not saying that. If you got the time, amen. If you don't, you got five minutes, three minutes, whatever. Whatever. But come to church to sing praises to God. Be ready to sing praises to God. Come to church with joy in your hearts. You know, God says He will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. You don't have to have everything going right. You don't have to. But one thing that you can do is come to church with joy in your heart. You can do that. Come to church and be ready to give your offering with joy. The offering of sacrifice. The offering of praise. Do it with joy. Don't do it half-heartedly. Do it fully. God, I trust you. Remember what I said, there's trust and then there's trust? I can say I trust, but now do I trust completely? When I come to church, I want to come to church ready to worship and praise God. I want to come to church to saints. So just, isn't it great? To, we had a, worship, a wonderful worship service this morning. I mean, it was just wonderful as we enter into the presence of God. And when you give all, God doesn't expect you to give any more than what you can give. Give your all. Just offer it as a sacrifice. Sing from your heart who God is. Sing from your heart what God has done. Sing from the heart what God is doing. And sing from your heart what God is going to do. You know, me and I asked that it got all frustrated and everything, but we kept praying and we kept praying and we kept praying. And yesterday was the answer to prayer. Amen? 14 years, 13 and 14, about, about 13 years of, of praying constantly. Or maybe 14. But God heard. Who knows? Today might be the day. Today might be the day. Amen? Amen. Lay aside everything else. Today might be the day. Hallelujah. David's prayer was going to be a place to praise God. David danced. David shouted. David had a great time. His wife got mad at him. And, and, and you know what? God, amen. I don't want all that. Let's not get mad. Let's get joy in our heart. Let's say, God, if you want to move that way, God. in our life to get all these impurities out. Right. Now you ready for something, aren't you? <laughs> Y'all get ready because we're going to have some testimonies next week about what God has done in your life. Right. But let's come to church ready to offer our sacrifices to Jesus. Didn't He sacrifice everything for us? He's given us everything. How many are you expecting a miracle? Mm -hmm. It's coming. I've been praying for you since August. You know, you know, you have since August. How long has that been? August. Well, let's say September, October, November, December, 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 morning. Nine months. And here you are with us. Keep praying for Tracy and Wendell too. We miss them. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been a good day for me. And I pray blessings on each one of us. Lift your head up high. For your enemies are small compared to your God. For God has you in the palm of His hands. Can we believe that this morning? Yes. So Heavenly Father, we thank You and we pray You for everything that You've done, everything You're doing, and everything that You're going to do. Father, 
You are leading us down a pathway that you want us to go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen and amen.